Hey, so today I'm excited because we're going to be working on creating some drawings with color. Uh, we're going to do a fully developed drawing using colored pencil, gouache, maybe a little bit of um, other kind of materials mixed in there. So it should be fun to really see how a full color drawing will kind of build up in layers and turn into a fully rendered drawing that you can be proud of. So I have gathered, you know, a whole batch of materials that I know that I'm going to need for this drawing. I have a scrap sheet of paper to kind of test out my gouache on the side, sheet of full paper. These are, you might recognize if you saw my previous demo, the thumbnail drawing sketches for the black and white drawing. I have the other half of that that I'm going to put color thumbnail sketches before I decide on my final composition. I have my set of Prismacolor uh, colored pencils. I have gouache. Um, I have two types of gouache here. You know, this is kind of a generic brand that, you know, I have on hand, but honestly, the best, my most favorite type of gouache is Holbein. Um, so that's the type of gouache I'm gonna use for this drawing because it has the highest pigment content. And that really matters. You might see a change in price, of course, but that just means you have a stronger color, more vivid and brighter color for those that set of paint. So it's gonna last you longer. It's gonna be able to cover on your drawing a lot more. Whereas student grade paints that are a lot cheaper have things like fillers, chalks, all sorts of stuff in them that um, evaporate quickly. And so you end up using up that gouache a lot more quickly than you do something that's a higher quality, which is why I prefer the higher quality as well as the, the beauty of the color. So those are the ones I'm going to be using. Um, I've got my paintbrushes, water, paper towel, um, something to mix up some paint with because I have just red, yellow, and blue here. You might have a whole set of other colors, which is totally okay. Um, just a, a pencil to kind of rough in my thumbnail, uh, squares, pencil sharpener, eraser. You know, if your eraser is all black like this, a great way to clean it off is actually if you have like a, a piece of like carpet or kind of something that's rough, like a rug, it's actually really great to just rub it on the rug or the carpet and, it, and that black will come right off so that you can then use it with color and not get black smeared all over your paper. Um, and then I've got masking tape as well. So, um, and my amazing still life and this fabulous viewfinder of my old slide, old school slide. And, um, I think that's pretty much everything that I need to get started and we'll see how it goes. I might end up, you know, adding something else in later, but I think those are the materials I'm mainly going to be using for this fully developed, uh, color drawing. So I've cleared off my space so that I can prepare to get started on my thumbnail sketches. I'm going to um, actually do these in gouache. Um, I think it's a good idea because it will help you to kind of get used to the gouache if you haven't used it before. And also it goes pretty quickly when you use wet media. So that's why I'm taping down these edges here, which is important, all four sides. Um, otherwise, it's going to get bumpy and rough, which you don't want. Um, so it'll probably be a combination of, you know, the color pencil and the gouache as I rough these in. So I'm going to make eight squares like the ones you see that are black and white here um, on the other side. And they're each going to be two by three inches, which is in proportion with the 12 by 18 inch drawing paper that I'm drawing with. So that is important. Um, do you make sure that you do those bounding boxes so that you have a sense of exactly where those elements are going to be laid out on your paper when you get to doing your drawing. You'll be able to tell whether or not you have a active or inactive composition. And then I think I'll put a piece of tape here as well just to clarify it from the other drawings that I made. And then... I'm almost ready. I'm going to put a sheet of newsprint down over these ones on the other side, just so that, you know, I'm clear on exactly what area I'm going to work on so that also to get my hand smudges on the other side of those pieces that I already did. I 
everything set up in front of me and I have my viewfinder here and I guess I could use the back, right? Um, and I'm going to look at what I've got set up, kind of a array of stuff here on my still life. Um, maybe I'm going to try to like dramatically light it a little bit more, but this is the general idea. I'm going to look through, you know, my viewfinder, if my camera will focus in the distance versus the foreground. And then I can see, you know, exactly, you know, what a composition might look like in different sections. So I might also think about uh, maybe my position, maybe I will change, you know, where I'm sitting or if I'm standing up and what that might do to my perspective on what I choose to draw. So I want to see, you know, minimum, you know, six objects included. Um, so think about each, you know, composition that you arrange and how unique you can be with each one. Um, I've got my gouache on the side. So I'm gonna just kind of dip in, make it pretty basic for these thumbnails, but when I get to doing kind of my full on drawing, I'll be probably mixing up certain colors to make sure I get like greens and other kind of colors that I want throughout. Um, but you'll see me do that as we go. So I'm looking through my viewfinder. I'm going to start, you know, like in this upper section with a little bit of light pencil work before I move to anything that's a wet medium. So it, it might take a little bit to warm up. You know, this is a very small scale drawing, so make sure that you're drawing proportionately to get an idea of that composition. Okay, so then switch to the gouache, and gouache is an opaque watercolor. So even if it dries up, you can re-wet it. Um, I'm just gonna mix right here on the palette so that I can work kind of quickly. Remember these thumbnails should be like, I don't know, three or four minutes each. Um, just get a general sense of, you know, where the pops of color are, and then you'll be able to see, you know, how your composition might work out. Dip into the water a lot, okay? This should not be looking dry, see how it's kind of fluid. Uh, there you can tell there's quite a bit of water there. And that's gonna allow you to push it around more quickly and get an idea of kind of what those objects are that you're drawing with this flower here. Scissors in the background. And this kind of yellow stick and blue dish. So paper towels on the side are always helpful so that you can wipe your brush a little bit. So I'm gonna rough in some color then I may also even return to doing a little bit more pencil work just to clarify some things. So I'm clear on you know exactly what it is that I can see here in this composition. And if you have other types of colored pencils, I have just kind of a limited color set here. You're, you know, you're free to venture out with your color, with your colored pencils. Um, notice with gouache, I have no black out here, only color, red, yellow, blue, and white. So no black in these. This is a full color piece. Even if you see, you know, black in things in what you're drawing, there's ways to get black and make it look more interesting and active without actually using black. As a painter, honestly, I don't buy black. I don't own black in any of my oil or acrylic paints unless I like am doing something like very specific that's not really one of my paintings. So you can see here this composition kind of coming together gives you an idea what those look like. And then I'll move on to fill out these with a different unique composition with each little thumbnail that I'm doing. Oops, I forgot the yellow bit in that. And then I'll look back later and it will help me to decide on which piece I want to create as a fully, you know, developed drawing. 
So if you haven't worked much with gouache before or really even heard of it, it's, it's essentially an opaque watercolor. Um, gouache paint is a mixture of natural or synthetic pigments, water and gum arabic, which essentially acts as a binding agent. So in some gouache paints, chalk is added to give the you know, the paint additional body. Some sources also compare gouache to acrylic, but honestly, I rather disagree. The only real thing that it has in common with acrylic is that it's water mixable, meaning that water is its solvent. So gouache itself is very matte and has a velvety look when dry. If you build up layers, this quality becomes even more apparent. You know, the best quality gouache is composed almost entirely of pigment and gum arabic, which gives it this beautiful look. So low quality gouaches will have chalk fillers or other additives that take away from the beauty of the pigment color. So these fillers also evaporate upon drying and so you end up using more paint than you would if you were to purchase a higher quality gouache such as my favorite that I'm working with here, Holbein. So with these thumbnails, I suggest using this as a chance to experiment a little with your gouache along with exploring composition. So there are several techniques to test out. So first is staining. People often, you know, decide to start staining with the surface they are working on. And this is what we will do as we get to doing our fully developed drawing and color here. So this involves covering the area with a layer of paint serving as kind of a base foundation. So simply mix your gouache paints with color or water um, and create a water-like consistency and wash this over larger areas of the page. So this technique is, is really great for, you know, adding color, you know, across the entire space to give it a base. So next is to begin with layering. So once you have a foundation layer, you can begin creating additional layers. So increase the opacity of the paint by adding less water to the gouache, creating a rich pigmented color to help fill out additional depth and de detailing in the work. You might also consider even, you know, like dry brushing, other kinds of techniques. You know, dry brushing is a technique which enables you to add texture to your artwork. Um, not thick texture, but the look of texture. So pick up some slightly wet gouache and brush it out, you know, using a paper towel. You can swab the dry brush over your painting, achieving a beautiful feathered texture. So of course, these are just a few techniques you can use to help you get started with gouache. Experiment with the paint on an excess sheet of paper and you know this will help you get a better understanding of how the pigment works. So here are my completed thumbnails and I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I'm trying to decide which one would be best. I think actually I like the vertical format. I did two horizontal and I was like, oh, I should try doing some verticals. So. I think I like the, you know, the two flowers kind of compared to each other. Um, so I'm thinking that I might go with this one here and see what happens. So to get started, I am going to tear out my drawing paper. And make sure I have all my materials that I need. Tear off the fringe on this and tape it down to my board. So tape it down on all four sides like we've done in the past. Or if you're just joining me, this is really the best way to work with the drawing when you're going to add wet media, which we will be doing with our gouache. I'm going to start with pencil first. So now I've gathered my eraser, pencil, sharpener, cup to put my shavings into, and I'm going to start with working on a quick gesture drawing. Um, I'm going to choose, I think, just one color for this, so maybe choose something that is a color that works well with what you've got there on your still life, and also something you can see so I'm gonna work on this kind of aqua blue, I think. You can choose anything creative that you like amongst the colors that you have, that is. <laughs> okay, so gesture drawing is, you know, once again going to be just a very fast drawing where you're getting everything down on the paper within the first few minutes, like maximum five minutes on this, okay? Rough things in and don't let yourself be confronted with an empty sheet of paper.
Now that I have a gesture down, it was pretty fast and rough. I'm going to switch colors and start to map out some more defined um, uh, proportion and scale, I think, like maybe with this darker blue that I have here and see how that goes. So remember with this organizational line layer and you're gonna be citing proportion and scale. You're gonna be using your pencil, extending it out, don't bend your elbow and compare the items that are in your still life in front of you and measure the height and the widths of things and also compare objects with one another as you are drawing. So this is a process I've been going over in these demos, but if you haven't joined me before, then this is a review, but the more you practice this, the better uh, you get at drawing. This is something I do almost every time I do, basically every time I do an observational drawing. So remember, you know, your gesture drawing might not be perfect. You can kind of alter it, edit it as you go. Um, use your eraser a little bit. Kind of using this vase as my one object that I can feel happy that I can sort of get down in space and I'm going to use that to help me measure everything else around it which is basically how siding works you get things in proportion to in relation so that they are in proportion in relation to one another so you measure even the vase in relation to itself like the top versus the bottom bottom's a little bit taller than the top but not a lot and then you measure the whole vase itself, you know, how much, you know, maybe half a vase to go up to the top of the paper. And then how big is that uh, flower that you're drawing that's in the vase, for instance. about the spaces between things, draw from one object over to another, ask yourself where does one object hit versus another, because I know that that blue bowl goes lower than the red vase, for instance, but I'm not going to just trust my brain or my eye, I'm going to make sure I physically draw it over so that I get it right. And it goes that up to there with the opening. So I'm going to start with a rough idea of where things sit and I'm going to go over it a number of times to make sure my proportion and scale is correct before I start in with any wet media. So this process is a little bit different than we were doing with the charcoal and the grayscale piece. Going to make this one a little bit more refined think carefully about our color start to use wash in an interesting way so make sure that you're making changes as needed i think this vase needs to go a bit lower honestly thinking about my composition that would mean this blue bowl needs to go a bit lower too So at some point I might bring in maybe like a dry white Conte to just help me sort out some of these lines because I'm getting quite a lot of them in here and then proceed from there. So proportion is one of the hardest aspects of drawing to master. It's also one of the most important. So correct proportion gives balance to abstract compositions and makes representational rendering seem more realistic. So when proportions in a work of art are inaccurate or poorly considered, the image looks very clumsy. There are several key aspects which can significantly help to develop, refine, and maintain the skill. So these techniques, along with the right reference tools, will help you, you know, well on your way to mastering proportion. 
So artists are often depicted holding, you know, a thumb at an arm's length, like you've been seeing me working on here. So this is a method of measurement which helps compare dimensions of pictorial elements. So by using a brush handle or a pencil as a measuring tool, you know, with the thumb um, sliding up and down, the artist can roughly judge um, scale and make comparisons between objects. So it's important to ex execute this technique with the arm fully extended without, with no elbow bending, um, so that the measurement is always taken at the same distance from the eye. So how pictorial elements are positioned has a strong influence over the impression of balance and scale. The viewer's eye naturally seeks to compare each element to the rest of the composition and uses these comparisons to understand overall scale. The artist can use this natural tendency to great advantage. So especially when working from direct observation, it's important to keep a consistent position to avoid altering the point of view of in the image. So you don't want to like stand up and then sit down halfway through the drawing. It completely changes it. So problems can develop if the artist begins, you know, working while sitting very straight up, right, in the chair, but gradually slumps down over the course of the session. So when this happens, the point of view can migrate by a foot or more. So some earlier instruments actually, you know, um, helped you to kind of create a fixed site. Um, artists obviously don't use these today, but I think it's interesting to maybe like know about some of this history and take a look at it. I'm moving on to creating contour lines, really slowing down and focusing on the edges of the, the object as well as the um, kind of internal edges of forms and really important lines. Um, so this is the moment where I'm really slowing down, focusing very clearly on those very significant details and getting them right before I start to fill out my color, which I'll be doing in the next step. Gouache is a versatile medium and can be manipulated using just water. Uh, you can layer it light to dark or dark to light, and unlike watercolor, you can paint in whites instead of masking them off. Overall, it's one of the most effective and probably underrated mediums out there. Gouache is also uh, what you can, would call workable, which means that you can use water to your advantage by, you know, in lifting up the medium and pushing the pigment around even after it's been dry. So it's basically re-wettable. So we are starting here with um, a technique called staining, which is similar to glazing, a term that you might know if you've tried painting. Essentially, I'm covering the area to be painted with a bit of color water down with water to provide a base to work from. I start by mixing my color and then picking it up with a wet brush. This will help the pigment move around the paper easier. Using even strokes and refilling my brush as needed, I lay in an even coat in each area that I want to cover. Next, I am working to add in some opaque layers of color. So gouache has such a rich and vibrant quality and has a tactile, velvety look to it. The great thing about gouache is that you can it can be reworked hours or even days after it has been applied. In fact, it stays workable almost indefinitely. So if you want to do something like create a gradient between brush strokes, you can load up your brush with water and apply it to the already dry strokes of gouache. You can then pull one pigment into another and blend the two together. You can use your brush to push the pigment from side to side to achieve a good blend. So dry brushing is a method also of layering color in a way that you know preserves texture. So using your brush, you load it with kind of semi-wet gouache, you brush it out a bit, emptying your brush until only about 30% of the original load is left. Then with quick strokes and no water, you swipe the brush across the surface quickly and lightly, and you can see how the texture of the paper and the brush create a ragged sort of effect, which might be interesting for you.
To finalize the drawing, I am bringing in some pencil lines to start to clarify edges and I'll do a little bit of detailing with some gouache and hopefully call this complete. Okay, well I've building, been building up a lot of layers and I'm finally kind of to the fun final stage where I can put like highlights and shadows and make everything really pop in a way that I like. So what I don't, I don't know if you know, if you haven't worked with gouache before, you can see like my palette is totally or mostly dry, but you know what you can do with gouache. Don't throw away the gouache because you can always re-wet it and continue using it. That's the great thing about gouache. So, you know, I can just put some water on this, dip it in and it'll still be totally usable. It's not like acrylic and it dries to, and you can't use it anymore. So I'm gonna take some white and you can see I can start to like make some of these kind of glass objects shine a bit. I can add in some highlights when they're, where I need them. And I think you'll see that all of a sudden, you know, the drawing's going to start to really come together in a way that is exciting. So it takes some time and some patience, honestly, a lot of patience to, you know, build up a drawing and see it to this type of fruition instead of like working one object to one object. So you'll notice that every time I create a drawing, it always comes up as a whole from a bit of like, I don't know, a rough mess of a gesture, right? Into something that becomes more and more developed over time. And then finally into something like I can be proud of that I think is beautiful. We did it! What a great job! For, I'm really happy with how this turned out and I hope you are too. It's been so much fun working with color, colored pencil, gouache. Hopefully you'll continue to do this in the future with your own creative work and I really appreciate you joining me in this demo. Mm -hmm.